Hi, it's Skiffin Lovates here, and in my last video, which was on the Zen cryptocurrency, I finished by commenting that we'll have to wait and see, and perhaps in a month's time I'll make another video assessing how the cryptocurrency has done. Now, as it turns out, I get to make one a lot quicker, and in the process explain the concept of a Sybil attack. So I'll start with that. A Sybil attack is when somebody creates false identities in order to subvert a system. And it's named after a uh, psychiatric patient who was codenamed Sybil, who had multiple personality disorder, as it was called back then. So in a Sybil attack, somebody creates, for example, lots of different accounts in order to take advantage of a system. And this is the reason why when you have a marketing campaign, they often say something like, only one item per household, because if they're giving away stuff, they don't want somebody to try and claim hundreds or thousands of free chocolate bars or soft drinks or whatever it is that's being given away. And this is a problem that the distribution of cryptocurrencies can face. And in the case of Zen, the idea was that each address can only claim Zen, and it can only claim it once until it's claimed it, and then it can claim again. And the idea there is that you have an Ethereum address in your wallet and you claim your Zen, Zen, then you mint it a day or three days or a year later, and then you can repeat the whole process. So the problem there, of course, is that anybody with a bit of knowledge can either create lots of addresses in their Ethereum uh, wallet, for example, in their MetaMask wallet, or if they're a bit more clued up, they can actually write a script to create lots of accounts and then fire off claims and subsequently mint for all of those, thereby getting a lot more of the currency. But even that is still okay, because there's a cost associated with uh, claiming and then minting Zen cryptocurrency. And it worked out, when I tried it, I think it was about eight or nine dollars when the gas fees were low. So you can't go and make a million addresses because you're going to need eight or nine million dollars. And that would actually be beneficial for the Zen crypto ecosystem because it would mean that a lot of um, value has been poured in to creating the coins in the first place. So uh, the problem then is how could you do this without having to pay all these fees? And somebody found a very clever way to do this. They found that there is an exchange which, if you deposit cryptocurrency with them, they allow you to withdraw it for free. They pay the transfer fee to transfer your crypto out again. And they're doing this as a form of advertising and as an inducement for you to use their services. And the exchange is called FTX. And it so happens that they weren't thorough with their checks on these transfer outs. So if you're using a MetaMask address and you're uh, sending a transaction to say that you want your Ether back out of the exchange, then they pay the fee and it's all very well. It costs about 24,000 gas. But the problem occurs if somebody creates a contract that deposits some Ether and then asks to withdraw it because the exchange wasn't doing proper checks. They weren't checking that the withdrawal request from a contract was actually truly just a withdrawal it could do a whole bunch of other stuff. And in fact, they were allowing you to spend up to 500,000 gas, I think it was, on your withdrawal request, which is way over the amount that's needed for a simple transfer of Ether. And so somebody created a smart contract that created lots more smart contracts, loaded them up with ETH, those smart contracts then deposited the ETH in the exchange and then withdrew it again, but their withdrawal request wasn't just a request to withdraw the ETH. It also put in, they snuck in a request to claim or mint a Zen cryptocurrency. So it's not kind of entirely Zen's fault, this. It's more to do with the fact that the crypto exchange had a flaw in their free withdrawal offer. And Zen happened to be a good way of taking advantage of this and converting that flaw into a means for creating or getting your hands on some ether. So to summarize again, the attacker created a smart contract, which itself spawned off more smart contracts. Those smart contracts then withdrew ETH from this exchange, 
which meant that the exchange was going to pay for the fees, but they piggybacked a Zen claim and a Zen Mint request on top of it. And that meant that although you don't get much Zen if you have a waiting period of a day or two, um, the uh, amount that you got from that was enough for the attacker to make a reasonable profit. And the problem, well, the, some would say it's not a problem, but the issue with the cryptocurrency world is that it's full of arbitrages, people who are looking to make lots of small profits to cumulatively make a big profit. And if there's a discrepancy anywhere, these arbitrages jump on it and hammer it until they extract the maximum value they can. And that's what happened in this case. It looks like from the reports I've read that the attacker managed to drain or rather spend over 80 ETH of the FTX exchange, managed to mint tens of millions of Zen in a very short period of time, and then managed to convert that Zen into Ether, ending up at the end of it all with a profit of about 60 ETH. So that's in the region of $60,000. By cryptocurrency standards, this is not a staggering amount. We're kind of getting used to hundreds of millions getting lost in hacks. So small potatoes in comparison, but still it's a significant shakeup for the Zen cryptocurrency because it starts to cast doubts on the efficacy of the project. Um, I still think it's not a complete disaster for Zen. It just suggests that it's not as rock solid as it might have first seemed. And in fact, the day after I made my video on Zen, I was thinking to myself, is there a Sybil attack? Because whenever you have a blockchain system which relies on one address, one vote kind of thing, or one address, one reward, that should set off an alarm in your head, hey, there's a risk of Sybil attacks here. And I would imagine that Jack Levin, the uh, founder of Zen, has enough knowledge, having been in various computer industries for over a couple of decades, <clears throat> especially having worked in running servers, which are often subjected to these kind of attacks, that he should have been aware of it. And I'm not sure exactly how you could um, prevent it from being exploited in this particular case. But, uh, you know, it's an issue and uh, it's going to have an effect on how Zen moves forward, I think. But again, let's wait and see. Maybe next week, maybe next month, there'll be another shakeup and maybe we'll find some other floor or maybe it'll all settle down and look a lot more reliable than, to be honest, it currently does at the moment. So that's a summary with how Zen's been progressing over the last couple of days. It's all fun and games in the crypto world, as usual. And uh, I hope you found this video instructive and useful. See you in the next one soon. Bye for now.